Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's shelved mini episode. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. I just want to go ahead and apologize for any sniffling or anything you might hear. I have been sick all weekend, so I've I've been trying to get over it. And because of that, I was unable to see Alien Covenant. I was stuck at home all weekend. Then we had a surprise graduation party on Sunday. Um, So unfortunately, I did not get to see Alien Covenant, so I will not have a review for it this week, uh, probably next week, because I'm dying to see that movie despite all the mixed things i'm hearing Um, but it sounds like if you are a fan of alien you're probably gonna like it so i'm assuming i will love it because i love prometheus and just give me more alien there's i'll say it there's never been a bad alien movie even alien resurrection as bad as it is i still enjoy watching it for different reasons uh but today we don't have a whole lot to talk about um we are going to discuss the script that comes out this Friday, or the episode, the script we're going to talk about on that episode, I should say. The script doesn't come out. It's already been out. Uh, but that script is Green Arrow, Escape from Supermax. Yeah, this is a superhero script. Uh, we haven't done one of those in a little while. But it's uh, based on the Green Arrow, which we do have the Arrow TV series, which I'm a big fan of. And... Um, it's it's really interesting. The script came out in 2000, or the script was written in 2008, and it was written by David Goyer and another writer, I think Justin Marks. I, I don't have that in front of me, so maybe I'm getting that wrong. We do talk about him on the episode, though. But I did look him up after the episode to just see what else this guy's written, and he wrote a, a, like a couple of movies I had never heard of. Then he wrote Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li, which is maybe one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But then he wrote the Jungle Book, the one that just came out, like the live action Jungle Book. And he's writing Jungle Book 2. So somewhere along the line, that guy turned things around. But um, this was a script him and Goyer worked on uh, about the Green Arrow character. And it was meant to just introduce the character to film. But it felt like it was written more as a sequel. Um, I sit down with a special guest this week as we talk about that one. That's right. A guest who hasn't been on the show yet. Uh that I actually reached out to and uh, made friends with over Twitter and he came on the show and eventually he has a podcast as well. I might come out on his show, but we'll talk about that more on Friday. I'll give you all the plugs for that. But um, today I do want to cover some, some small question I got on uh, YouTube. So when I post the podcast, it posts to multiple places, Facebook, YouTube, uh, obviously iTunes, Stitcher, we just got on. So if you have Stitcher, we can finally find our show um but yeah so i got a comment on youtube actually it's which seems to be the place where i get most of my activity so i guess some people are checking it out on youtube which is totally fine um but yeah i, I got a message from this guy uh brandon dozer Do- d-o-z-i-e-r i don't know if i'm saying that right um and i was talking to him on youtube and i hope he doesn't mind but i thought i would just bring this question up on the podcast and see if i can answer it as best as i can because it is a screenwriting question and i do fancy myself a screenwriter but i'm I'm not an expert you know there's a lot of different ways to do things i've obviously never sold a script so i can't sit here and be the authority on what works and what doesn't but i just thought i would try to share what little knowledge i have and just see if i can help anybody who maybe has a similar question Um, So he wrote to me, said, I am wanting to write a script based off an anime I like, but I normally don't write scripts and uh, I'm a bit confused on what direction, how far or how close to the source material to be. Considering that you spend a lot of time reading scripts, I want to ask you this. What do you think makes a great script and how should I formulate ideas? Should I worry about the quality on the first draft or does that come in later? Um, Yeah, so as far as a adapting anything goes i i don't know much about that i would assume that if you want to adapt something 
you you wouldn't just write a script and then pitch it to the people that own that property. That's something that they. I mean, I guess that's possible because like I I know Robert Rodriguez has a Predator Three script that he just wrote, and my understanding is he just kind of did it on his own as like a writing exercise. And like I guess that's possible. You could write something and then go pitch it to that company and try to sell it. But as far as like rights holding things goes, the rights have to be sold to a studio to make the movie and a studio has to be interested and i i just don't know if you could just like present something to somebody and if that would work uh obviously it's more than you're more than welcome to give it a try like i said i've never sold anything maybe that's exactly how some projects come around but um as far as being close to the source material and everything that's it's kind of a subjective thing if you look at a lot of movies that have been adapted from a source material how many of them directly match what it was based on, especially from an anime. I know there's been a few in Japan that I know the Rurouni Kenshin films do a great job of adapting that manga anime to the screen. And you look at a lot of projects and directors on the project, like resident evil is a good example that I go to. So based on a very popular video game series, but the first movie did not match the games at all. Like not even character names were present. And from we covered the original script on the show where George Romero, he adapted the first game and had all the characters obviously took liberties with some things, but People just want to make it their own. And Steven Spielberg was another example. He wanted to do, I want to say it was the Halo movie. Um, But it was a lot of, uh, he wants to make it his own. And the people didn't want to uh, let that happen. Because they wanted it to be true to the source material. Because obviously with like video game, the creators hold a lot of control over that. And they are very passionate about these projects that they spend years working on. Like more so than movies most of the time. And they want to see it done right. And there's been tons of examples of that. Um, a lot of the, a lot of these movies never come to pass because of that reason. I am sitting on scripts for like four video game movies that never happened. Uncharted was another big one. Um, the David O. Russell version just didn't match what they wanted to do. And so that version was canned. And I have that script and I can't wait to read it because Uncharted is one of my favorite video game series. So I really want to see what that movie was because I was definitely one of those people. When it was coming out, I was like, no, like you guys are totally fucking it up and blah, blah, blah. So I, I want to check that out and see what it actually is. But, um, you know, you just got to you, you gotta pull the important parts out, in my opinion, and you may not get it all exactly how it is in the show or book or whatever, but you just want to, you want to make sure the themes are present. Uh, I would say at least have the characters the same, like don't just like, don't do the resident evil thing and just completely rework it. Cause like the thing that was weird about that is Romero brought his original script to Capcom and they said, Oh, well it's too much like the video game. Well then why are you making the movie? Like people who, It's my impression that people who go see these things want to see them, see their favorite work adapted. And you can look at movies like 300 and Watchmen. I mean, these are both Zack Snyder uh, examples, but they're basically adapted page panel by panel from like from a comic book. And even Sin City does that to an extent, but it still mixes it up a little bit. It's not like completely identical to the comic, but it's pretty, pretty damn close. And, you know, those were successful to varying degrees. It all just kind of depends, you know. It's As a writer, you can only do so much. Like, you're going to write your script, and you're going to turn it in, and it may end there. And by the time it finally gets to screen, if it ever gets to screen, it's just not even resembling the same thing that you did. And as far as adapting an anime, uh, you know, the... People in Japan are going to have more control over that than you ever will. Ghost in the Shell, I mean, I don't know where that came from. from, It was obviously an American movie, but as far as like the rights and things like that, that could be a standout. But how many of those movies do we have in America? Most of those adaptations are made in Japan. And the ones we do get in America usually tend to be bad. I haven't seen Ghost in the Shell. I have a lot of friends that really like it, but I did see Dragon Ball Evolution, and that was hot garbage. And um, the only... The only uh, Japanese anime adaptation that I can think of that got an American release 
were the Roroni Kenshin movies. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's more out there, but those are the only ones I followed because I actually really enjoyed those movies. Um, so those are the only ones I know about. But um, as far as like your first draft and everything, your main focus, I, sh- I feel, should just be getting it on the paper. Um, it's it's it, First, before you even start writing, you should have plenty of notes. Uh, you should take a lot of notes. Don't just jump in and start writing. That's definitely not because you'll just end up with a nonsensical mess. Uh, you want to plan out your major moments. You want to basically connect those major moments as you write. Um, you want to have a clear, defined path for your characters. A big problem with first drafts is by the time you finish, you'll realize your main character isn't doing enough. Like maybe he's being carried through the script or something like he's not active enough. So you definitely want to make sure you have a proactive hero. Otherwise, it just comes out kind of boring and you just want to make it exciting. I'm trying to think of anything else I can really help. Um, I would always recommend. I know this book catches a lot of flack nowadays, but I think it still has a lot of uh value for education especially for a uh, just starting screenwriter but look up the book save the cat it's a book on screenwriting and it'll it has a really good section in there that gives you a breakdown of where you should be going on which page numbers and it just it'll help you sort things out and people can sit there and say like oh well screenwriting's different nowadays but i i, I honestly don't think it is it's the same as it's ever been and it, the book's a really helpful tool, and that helped me quite a bit with getting my direction with my writing. Because before, I would just sit down and kind of write and not really know what I was doing. And that book helped me, helped me with the, like the pre-production process of like writing a script. So, um, one question: How should he formulate ideas? I would say, whatever you're wanting to write about, whatever story you have, like let's say for example, I have like a uh, bloody shoot 'em up revenge story that I want to write. I've been working on it for years. So for me, like a thing I would suggest is watch a lot of movies that are similar to what you're trying to do. So maybe I would watch a lot of Die Hard movies or just like what is that Payback by Mel Gibson? Um, any kind of revenge story, uh, and just kind of see what works, see what didn't. Or again, read a lot of scripts for these. Uh, sit down with your phone or a notebook take notes like how long into the movie did you know x happen yeah and just try to you know don't watch the movies and just steal from them uh that's not what i would say but uh just get ideas like oh this was the type of thing that worked because you can sit there and say your movie is as unique as any other movie but let's face it everything is like everything's been done we're all just kind of building on something that's been done before and a lot of times in Hollywood, they will tell you we want the same but different. So a good example of that is like Die Hard. How many movies came out and were just Die Hard clones, but were also very successful? Speed was Die Hard on a bus. Uh, Under Siege was Die Hard on a boat. Um, yeah, just, you know, think of it like that. And as far as your first draft, it's it's going to be it's going to be garbage. Every first draft is. I mean, maybe garbage is a little bit strong, but just get your ideas on the paper writing and in particular screenwriting is a lot of rewriting and one of my favorite examples of like how the business of screenwriting works is a stack of so it's a stack of pages think like two stephen king books stacked on top of each other and the, the caption is what you will write and then another stack of papers that's only about five pages tall says what the studio buys and that's totally true. They're going to look at just a few moments in your script and be like, yes, these are the moments. These are the money making moments. So we're going to make this movie because of these five pages. And, you know, it's the sad truth. You're going to put a lot more work into a script than will ever see the light of day. And that's just something you have to realize. It's it's a lot of work. I mean, screenwriting can be a fun, easy way to write, but you're going to just do it a lot. And it's a lot of rewriting and you, like you'll be on your like a lot of times when movies are coming out, it's about the fifth draft that you're seeing and it's never going to be like the first or second draft on, um, you know, unless it's Suicide Squad. That was probably a first or second draft situation. Uh, but yeah, that's I get that's kind of all the advice I can give you for today. Um, 
again, I'm not the authority. I, you know, I seem like I'm stumbling over my words. Obviously, I've never sold a screenplay, screenplay, and that's the thing. Like, what is your ultimate goal? Do you want to sell this movie? Do you want to make it? Um, it you have to be able to just give up control once it's done, and you have to be okay with it. You know, it may be you may be bummed out. The whole idea is to sell the script and at most have your name in the credits and you know, that will, you'll feel very complicated or you'll accomplished about that. Not complicated, but uh, that's kind of all the advice I have for it. Thanks for the question. You've been very active with me on YouTube, this guy in particular, and I'll can, I've sent out my email. If anybody else has any questions, I love kind of answering this stuff and giving out what kind of advice I can. Um, so that email is shelled film podcast at gmail.com. So send in those questions and I'll try to give you anything I can. And if you want to follow the t- show on Twitter and Instagram, you can follow us at shelves podcast and don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. That'll also be a huge help for the show. Um, so yeah, everybody, thanks for listening. Be sure to check back on Friday for green arrow escape from Supermax.